Hello everyone, CDNet here with another update from the Avalanche ecosystem. Today, uh, two days after it launched, um, I'm going to take a first look at the new Avalanche bridge. It's no longer called the Avalanche Ethereum bridge. Uh, and the reason I'm two days late is I have some cool stuff uh, coming up, hopefully. Uh, some of it's still in review. For one thing, the uh, uh, Twitter Spaces talk I did yesterday with BCNA and CryptoFish. Um, I kind of messed up the recording, but I should be, still be able to recover it, but it's taking a while. Uh, those are two things you'll see uploaded soon, and then there's some other stuff in the background going on as well. And it just has a little channel update to throw in there as well. So like I said, today we're going to look at the Avalanche Bridge for the first time. And the first thing I noticed is that compared to the um, Avalanche Ethereum Bridge, it does look a little bit smoother. Uh, as you can see, there's a lot more things to fill in here. This looks a lot more like maybe the DEXs you're used to as well. Now, of course, we're never ever going to want to transfer something from Avalanche to Ethereum. That kind of defeats the point of having a better blockchain. Uh, and as you can see here, if you transfer more than uh, US $75, um, it doesn't actually have to be one inch of anything. You receive a small uh, AVEX airdrop. It's 0 0.1, uh, but it should be enough to do one or two transactions on uh, the Avalanche blockchain. So that should get you started. You do not need to do the entire you know, Binance to the wallet to C-chain thing. Um, that I did in the other video. So this is a very easy way to get you your liquidity bootstrapped on uh, Avalanche. So one feature that the new bridge doesn't have that the old bridge did have is the ability to wrap your token. Uh, if you want to transfer Ethereum, it needs to be the ERC20 version, so it needs to be wrapped Ethereum. Um, you cannot do that as far as I can tell on this bridge anymore. Um, I'm not completely sure if I'll miss that function. Like in my mind, you know, in one hand, it's it's losing a function, which, you know, do we need to lose a function? On the other hand, the way I see this bridge as best used, the best use case for this bridge is you want to transfer value, right? And then once the value is over, you can change it on Avalanche to whatever uh, you want to change it into. Uh, do keep in mind, of course, that um, this is, for example, Pangolin, that some of these tokens have more liquidity. So if you transfer uh, Rept Ethereum, very good. Rept Bitcoin, very good. Link, very good. Sushi, quite good. Like all those have, have enough liquidity, right? Um, however, if you were to transfer, for example, you have Basic Attention Token. I'm not sure if that's really anywhere on this list as, as having liquidity. So do pay a bit of attention to that when you transfer tokens, like when you're trying to transfer value, um, that you do transfer something that is actually does have value on the Avalanche blockchain. Or, or of course, if you want to do something that creates value for it on the Avalanche blockchain, that's also completely fine. So of course, we also have to use the bridge. Supposedly, it's five times cheaper and a lot faster than the other bridge was. Uh, I already checked and I coincidentally have uh, just about $75, just a little bit more of Rapt Ethereum that I'm perfectly happy moving to Avalanche because I definitely can use it there and I don't really do anything with it on Ethereum. Uh, and it should qualify me for the, for the airdrop. I checked I have about 0 0.75 AVEX still in the wallet on the other end on the Avalanche blockchain. Um, so if this all goes well, then I should end up with 0 0.85. That's right. Uh, and yeah, confirm it. And what I really like about this screen is actually it shows you, it, it keeps account of the confirmation. So it's not just your press button and then, you know, anytime you do something on Ethereum, at least in my experience, you kind of, you know, start getting a bit nervous, like is everything going to go well? Um, it, it keeps it keeps track of it and that's really nice. It also does a little calculation, I think, of the cost of gas, uh, which also will be quite convenient. Um, but otherwise, you know, this is the Ethereum side of it, so it's going to take a little while. So... Um, this is going to speed this one up for you. Okay, well, that's kind of suddenly changed from uh, from waiting for Ethereum confirmations to done. Uh, as you can see, didn't have to wait at all for the uh, Avalanche side, but um, the Ethereum side still took nine minutes. So that's five times faster than the the old bridge. And then I really have suppressed my nightmares from uh, from the first bridge. But it, it, there is a chance that that did happen because I remember being extremely nervous using the bridge the first time. Uh, so I do not completely want to discount the possibility that it took one hour. <laughs> uh, but yeah, nine minutes Ethereum, never used that stup stupidly slow. Apex, uh, 15 seconds. And I received my airdrop. So uh, that's really nice as well. Uh, transaction fee, super happy actually. That it's only 91 cents. Like... And no, we're not exactly in the, the, the absolutely busiest Ethereum times, but uh, 
Ethereum is not known to be cheap and 91 cents is very, very doable. And there we go. Very useful screen actually this. Um, if you want to add your token, you just use the uh, this screen. And I have it, yeah, perfect. So as you'll notice, actually it'll say um, wrapped ether dot E. Uh, everything that goes through the bridge is my understanding is it will have its name and then dot and then the source chain. So if it's Ethereum is E, uh, but there may be plans also to Binance and it will be, if it will be Polygon, it will be P, uh, you know, stuff like that. Um, so that you can tell the source chain. What I hope that it means is that, for example, if you were to transfer uh, BUSD, which is probably sourced on uh, on the Binance chain, Binance Smart Chain, that if you still move it to the bridge, that it will come out as the same asset, uh, both uh, BUSD.B. We'll see how that works when the time comes. Uh, also useful screen to like prove that the uh, bridge still has all those assets uh, available on this side. One comment to make is that the uh, wrapped ether.e is not the same as the ether you get from the Avalanche Ethereum bridge. Um, so they're not just uh, interchangeable. As you can see, there is not much liquidity for it. Um, it's my understanding that Avalanche, the uh, Ava Labs organization, will provide like a one-on-one -on -one transfer between these two. Uh, and then, of course, the uh, dApps that are live on Avalanche Seachain right now uh, will basically need to change out the old Ether for the new Ether. Uh, as of the moment of recording, uh, most of them, or at least all of them that I could find, uh, are still using the old Ether. So if you're bringing it over right now, you cannot immediately start yield farming. Um, but that will come very soon. Overall, a uh, very smooth experience. have to wait for Ethereum, but that's just Ethereum. Uh, it's very little I think you can do on it. Um, the airdrop that you get as soon as you move your funds over is huge, like it, it just makes it so much easier for you to get started. So for example, if this was your first ever transfer to Avalanche, you now have 0.1 Avalanche, um, sell half of that Ethereum for Avalanche, and then you're just good to, you know, liquidity farm, check out Oracle apps, buy some NFTs, everything, join liquidity pools with the rest of your wrapped Ethereum, all of that, um, just need a little bit of AFX for gas. So guys, as you noticed, uh, it got a lot darker here. It started raining. So if you're catching that in the microphone as well, do apologize. Uh, I hope you enjoyed watching this video. I hope you'll uh, give the new bridge a try, especially uh, if it's your first time ever to move to Avalanche. Uh, I think now it's a very good time. There's some really cool stuff coming up. Uh, I'm doing videos on a lot of that stuff as well, trying to do interviews or at least uh, reviews or less reviews with intros to um, projects. So if you're interested in that, check it out. Um, but that's it for now. Hope you enjoyed the video and I hope to see you in the next one. Goodbye.